Today's special guest is Kimberly Bourne, and she is going to be sharing how to create the Daisy Toddler Quilt. So welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. I love this quilt. It is just beautiful. And do you use the Calliope fabric line? I do. Mm -hmm. And this is meant to go along with the car seat cover yeah. that you designed. Now you have, your. what's your pattern company? It's Main Street Market Designs. And you have about 15 different mm -hmm. quilt patterns. And I have car a, seat patterns. a boy car seat cover pattern and this Daisy's car seat cover pattern. And then a bunch of other quilts of and all different types. this is types. fantastic. So girly. It looks like a beautiful quilt. Oh, thank you. And I like that you have a space for, you can still have toys. Yeah, it on. makes it so you can still have it to the frame so it doesn't tug on the fabric and wear it out. Very great design. Very great design. And this is the quilt that goes along with a cart seat cover. So what are the fabric requirements for this quilt? All right. First, you will need three-eighths of a yard for this inner border here. Okay. And then you'll need five-eighths for this outer border that goes all the way around. You'll also want to have two roly pulleys, so Which that are two and a half inch strips. Mm -hmm, exactly, and that way you can have them going both directions, and I'll show you that a little later. And then for this center panel here, you'll want a third of a yard for the background, a fat quarter for the large flower, and a fat quarter for these two smaller flowers, as well as uh, a, an eighth of a yard of the blue, the yellow gingham, and the green gingham for the leaves. Great. And this will all be on our website mm -hmm. as well as the template. Yes, to make definitely. The so you're going to show me how to make this section first. Yes, exactly. Okay. Pull this out of the way. All right. So first we'll take the background piece, and I've already squared it off. So what we'll want to do is measure out nine and a half inches wide and for me it's easier to do two rulers for that so that you can get a really accurate measurement okay so i have a six inch long ruler and then i just have the other one so i put this at three and a half inches and this at six to get the nine and a half inches wide and i'll just take my rotary cutter Okay, mm, nicely done. So this is your section you're working with? Yes, exactly. Now that we have the strip cut, we'll want to measure out for the length of it. For me, it was just easier to do this and keep it folded. And the finished width that we'll need is 34 and a half. So I did 17 and a quarter here. Okay. And Measured out. Mm -hmm. And so now we have nine and a half inches by thirty four and a half. Okay. And That's the best base. part about doing it that way is that you still have a crease down the center, so it kind of gives you an your anchor mm -hmm. for where to place the flowers. So now what we need to do is cut out the flowers and the leaves using the template. Mm -hmm, exactly. So I have here the Heat and Bond Feather Light, and it's a new product by Heat and Bond. I like it better than the Heat and Bond Light because it has a little bit more flexibility. So, so it's the Feather Light. Yeah. Okay. And then it makes it softer for blankets. Yeah, um, it flows a little better, and I love it for the car seat cover because it just it has really a well. Exactly. Okay, how does this work? All right, first we're going to take the template, and for the template, I've included the solid outline here mm -hmm. so that you can just trace exactly if you're doing something where you're doing a blanket stitch or just straight on there for this method. But I've also included a dash line so that you can do the needle turn if that's your preferred method. Okay, great. It looks like you did a blanket stitch on all of yours. I did. So we're just going to probably cut it to the Exactly. Solid. All right. We'll trace the solid line. Right. 
So we'll switch so that we're tracing on the paper portion. And just using some really good light, you'll want to just follow the line and just trace it out. And so you've got uh, two different, one big flower and two small. Mm -hmm. And some cute leaves. And this is the larger of the two leaves. Just to give it a little dimension, I added two different sizes. So once you have it traced out, you'll want to take some scissors and just cut loosely around it. You don't want to cut exactly on the line. Mm -hmm. That way, when you press it to the fabric and cut it down to size, it won't peel from the sides. So I just like to trim it down. Okay. Great. So now we take the green fabric in this case for the leaf and to the wrong side of the fabric we're going to press on the template that we just cut or traced out. And make sure that you have the sticky side, the shiny side down. Do not want <laughs> that on your iron. No, it is definitely a pain. <laughs> All right. And just for a couple of seconds, you want to go around Make that. Make sure that adheres really well. Exactly. Some of the edges tend to peel up, which is why we left a little extra on there. And then we're going to come over and we're going to cut right along the template for this time. And we're not. And so if you're needle turning this, you wouldn't need the heat and bond. No. This is only if mm -hmm. you're doing it directly yeah, to your and project. And you'll want to stitch it down because the heat and bond isn't exactly t strong enough to keep it on there over wear and tear. So you'll want to stitch it down using a blanket stitch is a great stitch for it. Love this fabric that gingham makes an it is so cute. A darling leaf. And there we go. All right, now that we have this one leaf cut out, I've already traced the other flowers and leaves, so we have it done. All right. We'll want an ironing board to lay this out on. So we'll take the background. Make sure you just have. This makes it easy. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to shift it after you've laid them out. You just have it all ready to go. And it is nice you've got the center full. Exactly. So you know where the center of your project is. Helps really anchor it. So just kind of lay out the flowers however you'd like. Those are so fun. I love these colors together orange and corals, mm -hmm. and blues. Just some bright, just fun colors. Play with it and see what you like. Exactly. So we'll just stick that there. So once you've got it how you mm -hmm. want it, exactly. What do you do next? So then I take them and I do it layer by layer. It's a lot less risky to do it one layer at a time so things don't shift around and you accidentally glue something down a way you didn't want to. So you take it and you'll peel off the paper backing. So you peel off one layer, the mm -hmm. backing, and then you iron it. Exactly. And then you go to the second layer. And so here, I'll just stick this in, and then... We're going to take the other flowers off, and you're going to iron the mm -hmm. section on. Exactly. Okay. And just kind of make sure it's where you want it. And we'll take it off. All right. Okay. Now we'll just finish up with this last flower and we just peel off the backing. And it's really looking wonderful. I love it. It just really has a lot of pop to it. A lot of fun for a little girl. So after you get this all ironed, mm -hmm. 
Then you're going to take it to the machine and just take a blanket stitch around all your edges. Exactly. And you just use the same thread? I use different colors of thread, but you could use you? an invisible thread if you wanted. Yeah, one of those clear threads yeah. would be a good choice, too. Exactly. All right. Okay, looks fantastic. That looks great. So I do love that we use different stitching on that. It really sets each section apart. Yeah, it just kind of brings out some of the different colors, and you can make and it have I a little pop. And I love that it's so flexible, too. Yeah, that and it's so really great nice. when you have the different layers stacked up on each other. It makes it just easier, and you don't have that big bulk. bulk. Okay, what, what's the next step? All right, so the next thing we'll do is the diagonal stitching. So here, I got your roly pulleys. Exactly, I've already gone ahead and stitched two together. And you'll notice that I have set offset them. I offset them about an inch and a half to two inches. Okay. And the reason you want to do that is so that you can get the diagonal and have get the maximum use out of the fabric. So one way you'll have it offset going one direction, and then the opposite, you'll just offset it going up the other way so that you get the two directions on the quilt. Okay, that looks great. So now that we have that, I've already stitched together all of the ones for the okay, tire panel. Great colors. I just kind of did them in a random order so that it just kind of made a good pattern. So yes, you've done, you've offset it diagonal all the way up. Haven't you? I have, and that way you can get the maximum amount of usage out of there and not have as much fabric waste and still get what you need. So Great I've idea. already pressed it, and I just pressed it all going one direction. Um, so it doesn't matter which direction, stitches. exactly. Okay. And we'll go ahead and start cutting. All right. Show us how you cut this big strip. Yes, it is a little tricky because everything is on the bias, so you have a lot of stretch. So be careful not to stretch your fabric. Exactly. You so I just kind of start here and using this ruler, it's nice to have the 45 degree angle here so that you can line it up with the fabric because they're kind of at a 45 mm -hmm. degree angle. And you'll go ahead and start cutting. Slide this down mm -hmm. and just kind of line it back up again with where you're cutting and lines up pretty good there. It doesn't need to be exact. Mm -hmm. And then one more time. Oops. <laughs> the heaviness is pulling that down. All right. Great. And then do you flip it and um, the other side? No. Nope. What I do now is what I did before with cutting it where I used the two rulers. And go ahead and actually we will flip, flip it, it that way. And do that side. And you're doing nine, nine and a half. Nine so and a half. everything is not all the rectangles are nine and a half by thirty four and a half. Okay, great. Makes it simple to remember. Flip this out. And we'll go ahead and pull it up a little so that we have... Get our end. Exactly. And then just measure again the three and a half plus the six. And the trick here is you don't want to do a lot of stretching because then you have an off measurement, so you just kind of want to lay it down, rest it down without stretching. <laughs> okay. Just pull it down. Mm -hmm. Careful not to be stretching. We'll just kind of rest it on there and remeasure so that we get that again. We have the three and a half and the six. And 
one last time. We are there. the Great. side. So now we're going to square it up. On mm -hmm. the exactly. And here I found it was easier to use the actual cutting mat. So just make sure you have a nice rulered cutting mat to go off of. I just square off one end really quick. Just you want the long or short? You know, I'll take the short. <laughs> and I just line that up with this corner up here. And Edge. And take that off. So now we'll just turn it around and I line it up here. This is again where having two rulers is nice because you can anchor it. Get a good there. And just make sure it's nice and straight along this All end. Along and then I go to 34 and a half. And the reason I did this instead of folding it in half is just because the bias will kind of pull weird if you fold it in half. And you could get your rectangle off. Exactly. And it's so good of you to keep this within the size of your ruler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So it's not all off. So that's a good idea. Exactly. Okay. There we go. So now that we've finished this section, what's the next step? Okay, we're going to cut down the inner border pieces and then we'll pin it on to and sew it's it. It's good that. to use like a solid or a blender fabric. Yeah, exactly. Nice for your eyes to rest. Mm -hmm. So here we can fold it because it's not on the bias. We can have it folded to get that measurement. And again, it's going to be the 34 and a half inch length. And I've already cut it down to one and a half inches wide. Okay. So we'll do we this 17 and a quarter, which is half of the 34 and a half. Quick little cut. All right, now that we have this cut, we are going to pin it on to the edge. And where we have this going along the grain and this along the, s the bias, we're going to want to pin it a lot so that we can ease in the bias. Otherwise, this piece is going to be huge. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we'll pin the outside pieces. And I love, this is one of our pin cushions from our pin cushion club last year. It is so cute. And so then, we're going to go to the center, and I still have the mark here, and you just kind of Fear where the center is on that it helps to kind of pull on it a little, so you can would it just be match it. Would to like fold in half? Yeah, kind of mark that would work too. And we kind of match up that mark and pin in the center. Then from there, you're going to want to continue and pin it in the centers here and here. Then once you've done that, you'll want to pin again in the centers. That just makes it so that you can really ease it in so you don't get a big lump at the oh, end. Shifting fabric, yes. Exactly. Okay, so we're going to go sew this section. We're gonna sew this border on as well, and we'll come back. Okay. So we sewed the borders on our top section. Exactly, and then we've already sewn together the bottom section, which is three of the diagonals, the remaining three. And what we have here is we have a border, then the diagonal, border, diagonal, border, Just diagonal. switch directions so you get this zigzag. Exactly. Love that. And then we'll just push that down so we have a perfect section to add in our floral piece. And from there, you'll just want to go ahead and pin it and sew it, and pin it and sew it. Okay, let's go get it done. Okay. All right, this looks fantastic. Oh. We've only got a few more steps, don't we? Exactly, so we've gone ahead and sewn them all together, and we've pressed them into the border um, so that 
you just have it all nice. You don't have a lot of bulk along the Good tip. seams there. And now we are going to go ahead and add the border pieces on. The same border will continue around the sides. Exactly. So I have here the width of fabric strips that I cut, and they are one and a half inches wide. And then I just sew them together and trim off the selvage and press. It gives you the length you need. Exactly. So you'll have a lot of extra there. And then you'll want to take some measuring tape and measure in the center of the quilt to get the length of those strips. Okay, you're going to square up the quilt, so, and we measured it already, it was about... 51.5. But don't rely on that number, make sure you do your own measurements on the quilt. Exactly, because every quilt will have a little variation there. Uh, Alright, so we're going to cut our borders, sew them onto our sides, exactly. and then we'll come back. And make sure to pin on those borders, because you still have the bias going nice along stretch. with it. Okay. There, alright. So we've sewn on our inner border and pressed it. Mm -hmm. What's the final step? So now we just have to do the outside border and it's this beautiful main print of the calliope line. And what we're going to do is we are going to measure the middle going across this way to get the measurement for the top and the bottom. Because we're just going to do these sections and we'll sew the outside sections. Exactly. So the measurement here is 36 and a half, and we'll just cut these down to size. They are three and a half inches wide, and we can do that. We'll finish all our borders, and when you're done, you can take it to the quilter if you mm -hmm. want to really do a lot of work, hand quilt it yourself. But this just turned out beautiful. If you want to, you can go ahead and add some of the Riley Blake buttons that they have that just work something perfectly. extra. Yeah, just to add a little accent there. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for sharing this beautiful quilt. Oh, it was really fun. Thank you.